Hello, welcome back to the Freak Show, Bumpy McSquiggums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as I continue with my Let's Play of Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin. Alright, well, I don't really want to walk forward while the big dude's walking at me, so I'm going to wait till he turns his back. I told you guys there's going to be an undead to the right. Like I said, I'm not going to try to make this like a super tutorialized deal, but I am very familiar with the area that we're in right now and what we're doing. So, that being said, yeah, just, just be aware of it. Anyway, like I told you guys before... This is the other way to get out there to do the stuff, and if you climb back up that ramp that was built there, the little logs, you can just go up over here and straight down. And right now we just don't have the ability, strength, whatever, to actually get better equipment, because we just can't use it or hold it. But we're going to slice our way through that guy, he's going to have his compatriot run up on us, slice through him as well, it's not going to be a big deal. Now over here there's a trap. You see right in front of us there's an archer right in the, the V of the branch there. Just to the left of the branch sticking up, right above my head there. There's a helmet of another guy. There's a dead body over there. Those are all things that are going to attack us. There's also somebody over there and another guy that falls from up that way. So there's a whole bunch of bad things. What we're going to do is we're going to aggro this guy and we're going to fall back. Avoiding hopefully getting shot with an arrow, which I just barely did. We'll pull him back out of range of the arrow launching individual. Gonna slice him. Just a bunch of little small attacks. Ah, darn it. Small attacks there. I looted something and it cost me. I done got shot it did. Alright, gonna aggro the sword individual. It's gonna kinda roll around inside the river. It's gonna be fine. Come over here and he should be on his way. Oops, I did not roll in time. That was a misplay on my part. I know you're shocked. Gonna dodge out of the way in case the arrow was coming to get us. And at this point, we can take on the archer. Oops. We can get shot in the face with an arrow. It's totally okay. Man, I am bad at dodging today. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't usually get hit by this guy. But, you know what? I've done bad things before. I'll do them again. Alright, the axe guy hits really, really hard, but he's also really, really slow at attacking, moving, and all sorts of other various things. Alright, so what did we get? We got a hollow infantry helm. Did we get... I, I'm not sure what all that we've got so far. No other weapons at this point. Alright, and as stated, there's one final guy that we have to take care of before we do anything else. I do know I'm aware that we've missed a bonfire already at this point. Um... But, however, I was not aware of that. That was a thing that the Colonel found that I totally missed with me playing it before him. And we did actually play through to the point where we could both get into each other's game as like a test, but we never made it there in an actual full Let's Play. So, my apologies on that, folks, but it's okay. It's okay. You didn't miss much. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right, we're going to head up here. And I know you guys can be like, why didn't you spend your souls to level up? I plan to. I plan to. I know roughly how much I need for the weapon that I want to use. That I'm going to be able to get here relatively soon. And instead of having the weapon being incapable of using it, I figured I might as well get myself to the point that I can use it. So I'm going to drop a few fools here. Actually, I'm not sure why that took... So, there we go. Oh, good. Look, he's, he's just gonna wreck my face. That was fantastic. I'm trying to see how much you can get away with with, like, heavy attacks and chaining them together with your light. You really can't get away with much. It's a bit unfortunate. Now, I don't recommend, generally speaking, clearing this room out completely until you go up top first. However, I want this because it's going to give me a bit more range, which I desperately need. The dagger's fine, but the dagger also has very limited range. The broken straight sword does a fair amount of damage even still, but it's got much, much better range. So that's now my right hand, and my left hand's my dagger. So we're already dual wielding like a boss. I'm going to chug an Estus Flask. When you first go over here, walk over to the ladder. Don't climb up the ladder. Step back, and you'll see a dude's climbing down. If you go up the ladder, he will kick you in the face a bunch of times. It's bad, so don't do it. I would recommend avoiding that at all costs. Alright, so... I don't want to climb. 
Now, let's see if I can make this jump. The colonel misses jump about 347,852 times. I've never missed the jump. And it looks like I never will. Alright, we got a, a couple of important things there. Some more souls. And we got something that I find critically important. And you'll see why in a little bit. I'm going to equip the throwing daggers to my bar. And we're going to go use that bonfire now. I should have enough stuff that I need to do the things that I want to do. Yes, I could probably defeat the big guy right now. Don't want to do it yet. We'll do it soon. Maybe in two or three episodes, but not quite yet. So the bonfire is here. Anyway, it is here that we shall do various many cool things. Like, for instance, this. We're going to use the souls that we've gained. I love the fact that we can use multiple souls at once. Something that the Prepare to Die edition of Dark Souls 1, and possibly Dark Souls 1 non-Prepare to Die edition, did not allow. You had to use each one individually. It was just a pain. This is much nicer. I like it a lot. All right, that being said, let's talk to our gal pal Bearer here. of the curse. Seek souls. Larger, more powerful souls. Uh -huh. Seek the king. That is the only way. Lest this land so you swallow said. you whole. As it has so many others. All right, well, she's still kind of like, hey, positive, super down. So I don't, I don't know what to tell you guys. All right, we're going to kneel at her feet, and we are going to level up. I'm going to go with 10 into dexterity, and, uh, yeah, I guess. I was hoping to be able to get 9 into strength. It's like I'm going to be just short. That's fine. We'll make it work. Okay, so we've leveled up. We're about to go get ourselves our next weapon. It's actually going to end up as our offhand for a while, but... We're going to use it as our main hand because it's better than the broken sword and it's better than the dagger. So, when we have better things, we tend to use them. Now, the downside to doing this is stuff has respawned. That's not a huge downside or super bad, but... It does make it so we have to fight through things that we've already killed previously. Oh, I didn't have time to roll. It's a bit unfortunate. There we go. So, essentially, we just have to kill a few guys here again and we'll be fine. So we killed the two there. We're going to have to do the whole four or five guys over here with the archer shooting at us type thing. It's it's fine. Why didn't he just go absolutely mental? Oh, he went a little mental. You saw that arrow? I saw that arrow. It looked like it wanted to poke me in the face. And not in a good way. I'm not sure that there is a good way to stab or impale somebody's face, but... Okay. Alright, you... Bring on the hate. Basically just a bunch of light attack spams there. Alright, we're gonna go after the archer. Assuming I don't get shot in the face again this time around. Hey look, I learned to dodge between this attempt and the last one. Stabby, stabby, slash, slash. Alright, so down he goes. Victory is ours. The dude up top, we need him to come falling on down, and then we'll crush his soul. And use it in a soul smoothie. It's the best thing to do with souls. Alright, so again, I tried there. I wanted to see. I can't get away with throwing, unless it's the end of a combo, I can't get away with throwing a heavy attack in there. So I'll be playing around trying a few different things as we go through. Sometimes, hopefully, sometimes it'll work. Other times, it might not work. We'll have to see. Anyhow, uh, I'm just going to kill as few of these guys as I can down here. As I miss so many attacks in a row because, you know, badness. Alright, looks like we can get to the base of the ladder. The guy's going to come down, as he always does. And time for missing or something. I believe he died to the fall. And it does not look like he dropped anything, so there's no point in going down there and looting him. Now we get to climb the ladder, and the reason we should climb the ladder and do all this before we go and clear that big area down at the bottom is that guy right over there that you see. He likes to throw firebombs at you, and I don't know if you guys know this, Fire bombs hurt, they are not fun, and yeah, I, I highly recommend not getting hit with fire bombs. So we come up here, 
and we do a little bit of the murder. So a little bit of the murder. I'm going to step away. I'm going to roll into him and do a slashy attack, and down he goes. All right, so easy kill there. Not that big of a deal. Make a running jump over here. And try not to run off of anything. Go ahead and pick up the short sword and the soul of the lost undead. I should have done this correctly, and indeed I did. Seven strength and ten dexterity required, and I have eight and ten. So I'm good. Making the leap back across, and you could fall down, but if you do... Well, first off, you're going to take damage, which is bad. Secondly, you're going to land amidst a whole bunch of guys. And the clo when you get close enough to an enemy, they will come to life. So it's better to approach it slowly and fight them one at a time. I mean, you can get away with doing it the other way, but I don't recommend it. So I'm going to take these guys on one at a time, or at least close to one at a time. Except when I mess up and I take them on two at a time. Like now. What's up, buddy? They do move pretty slowly, so that's a good thing. Hey, another throwing knife. So that is a good thing, but not all of them do, and some of them actually have weapons and shields and stuff. And those guys tend to hurt a bit more than the unarmed masses. So these guys especially you want to be a little bit more cautious with when fighting. And you can always backstab critically hit them if you get in the right position at the right time. Which I happen to do there. It's pretty easy to do. In fact, you could probably kill all of them that way if you really wanted to. Not really looking to do it though. It's easy enough just to slice and dice them. Sometimes they will drop some decent items. I saw at one point one of them dropped one of their swords. One of the swords guys dropped like a, a an undead soldier's sword, not a broken one. So that's cool. And then you see that they dropped the throwing knives and such. But not always. And sometimes they just drop pieces of armor like that. The hollow infantry gloves. Oh, there's one more. Mike, did I get them all or did I miss one or two? I think that's the only guy I missed. Okay, looks like we got everything else. So, we're going to go through the fog door. Now, normally that means a boss. In this case, it does not. So, that's one thing. Now, this next area is going to be a bit... Eh. You can run straight ahead and fight the two guys in the room. Or you can go here and then roll away because there's an ambush. Surprise! And we dodge the bush of amming. That's good. I would also advise walking to this doorway and rolling away because, again, sort of an ambush type scenario. Stab him in the face, and there we go. Another life gem in the back corner of this room. There's another guy that's going to get up and try to do bad things to you. Make sure you slaughter him. I like to roll through all these things. And we're going to chop our way through this bookshelf if I learn how to aim, which is heh, questionable at best. And we got ourselves a wooden bolt, or a wood bolt. Okay, now the next area is going to have two guys in it. Also kind of tricky, I guess. There we go. Alright, so there's going to be a guy over to the right. You can see his... Well, you can see him right there. And he's going to have a friend soon. So, I would advise trying to kill the first guy before the second guy makes it to you, but you might take some damage. Now, remember when I was talking about the throwing knives and how amazing they are? No? Well, I did mention that we it's really good that we got throwing knives because we need them. And we do. Well, you don't need them, but it makes this part a lot easier. This is probably going to be one of the first places folks have a hard time with. So there's an archer up there. He will not come down, so you have to go up to him, or you can just chuck a knife at him. It won't kill him, but the second knife will, and I wasn't able to dodge in time. It's fine. Now, why it was an imperative or important that I did that? Why didn't I just walk up and murder him? See that guy above me? He throws firebombs. We already know firebombs are bad. On top of that, you go up there, kill him. Firebomb boys firebombing you. There's a melee guy to the right. And there's another archer off to the side that you can't reach. That's going to continually shoot at you. So all of those are bad things. All of those are probably things that you want to avoid. All right, I took him down. He is out. We are good to go. And now I'm going to deal with the melee combatant. 
And I'm going to dodge the archer. See the archer over there? Ah! We can potentially... We can wave at the archer. Hi, archer, what's going on? He's going to be like, oh, you want to wave at me? That's not cool, man. Anyway, once you do that, you kill those three. You come over here, you grab this. You could chuck your dagger at the archer if you really wanted to kill him, but I don't recommend you do that. It's not really worth it. Anyway, come up here. We're close to the next bonfire. And, well, like, really close. The bonfire is right through this door. You have to open it. However... There's someone laying in wait around this corner, and I would advise killing him before opening the door. If you're fearful that you can't handle the guy, then, I mean, maybe take your chances. The bonfire is literally inside that door, but he's not overly difficult, so you should be able to take care of him pretty easily. And you get a witching urn as well. Alright, into the room we go, and in here we're going to find our destiny. Or some such nonsense. I don't know. It's fine. Alright, we're going to light the bonfire. We're going to talk to the creepy witch lady over here. Hello, creepy witch lady. I'll do that. Okay. Alright, creepy laugh. Merchant Hag Malentia. Sure. Now, what do we want to buy from here? We want to buy the key to the blacksmith's shop in Majula. So we're going to do that. Then, what are we going to do? We're going to leave. You're welcome, kindly. What we're going to do is... We're going to go here, and we're going to utilize the souls that we have gathered thus far. Bling! And then we're going to do it again. Bling! And we're going to head back to Majula. And we are going to, hopefully, be able to level up. We'll be able to get the blacksmith moved into his place, because we have the key now. And we should be... Pretty Pretty good. We should be relatively well off at this point. I'm going to go talk to the blacksmith so I don't forget after I open the door. So we use Lenegrast's key. Ah, yes. Very good. Uh huh. Now I can get to work. Yep. But first, let me set up. Come again later. Alright. So, what are the main things you need? That Well, there's multiple reasons you need a blacksmith. He does sell some stuff. Uh, but one of the big things that he does that you absolutely need him for is your weapons have durability. So does your armor. There's things that will, I imagine there's probably things that will damage your armor pretty heavily. There was stuff like that in Dark Souls 1. I assume it's the same in Dark Souls 2. Um, also, when you swing your weapons each time, they do take durability damage. If they completely break, you have to go to a blacksmith to repair them. If they are just damaged or close to being broken if you rest at a bonfire they do restore so they that's a big curse. difference she says the same yes. thing every time um, at this point so yeah it that's a big difference before there was a much higher durability on most of your weapons armor and everything else and when it got low you'd have to go get it repaired now that's not the case you just have to make sure it doesn't get broken so that's good and another thing that's been different um, you don't actually open illusion walls by attacking them. You actually have to press the A button, the same thing you read messages with and you talk to NPCs with. So yeah, that's that's different. Alright, we're going to go with 10 strength, 11 dexterity. I am going to be primarily dexterity this time around, but for right now, early on, you need strength to be able to wield weapons. Not a lot, but some, and then they scale with your dexterity and all that stuff. It's fine. All right, we're going to travel back to the Cardinal Tower. I believe we have enough time. We should be able to get ourselves our actual next weapon. So I'm looking forward to that. You all should be as well. And then up here, we can get Pop and Dalabrak, or Dalabrick, if we wanted to. I don't want to summon anyone. But he's there if we wanted him. And surprise, here's our buddy. And yes, he'll be there every time. I think you can kill stuff a whole bunch of times and they stop respawning. So after like 20 or 30 kills on something, they probably don't respawn anymore. So that's kind of neat. All right, I'm going to drop down here. Now directly in front of us, we can try a plunging attack. I'm actually going to switch to my two-handed stance on this weapon. And I'm going to totally miss my plunging attack because I am fantastic at this game. However, 
I'm still okay enough to actually avoid the death there. There are two people. Try to land the plunging attack. If it works, it makes your life much easier. When you're done, there is a ladder over that way. You see it right there? Directly in front of us there. Uh, that's how you get back up. And then to get back up to where we just fell off from, you have to go in here and then go up left. And then you fight the guys that I threw the daggers at uh, with the firebomb and the trap and all that stuff. It's easier just to use a homeward bone, so that's probably what I'm going to do. It just makes everything significantly easier. Alright, let's see if we can land on this guy. Nope. And he's going to stab me in the face. I have a really hard time landing the plunging attack on this guy specifically. So, a bit unfortunate there. We did get slapped around a bit. I'm not going to be using a shield this game, or this time around at all. So mock me if you must, but I may die a lot too, but I'm going to try not to use it. Alright, and by try, I mean I'm not even going to equip one. So, kill that guy. There's going to be two others that are going to come for you. Kill those off as well. There's supposed to be two. I guess this guy didn't get the memo. And welcome to... I, I would say your first boss. Because it's not really a boss, but it's your first challenging battles about to start. So be aware of that. Alright, I'm going to pick up an item. You look over to the left, there's a statue looking thing. That's not a statue, because there's another one right there. And I don't mean this statue, I mean the one in front of us. This one comes to life. Hi, statue. Ah! Okay, so he's got like four or five different attacks. He's got the running slam attack there. He's got the regular slam attack. And you see how you slow down when he swings that one? When he swings from that way, that's when you want to hit him. Back away. Hit him again. Roll out of the way of that, but slightly quicker than Bad Bumpy did there. Because that was pretty bad. Dodge that. That's the one you want. When he swings from the other way, that's the one that you want to be worried about. So far, he's pretty much dead. It, it's a pretty easy fight. I actually very rarely ever get hit by those guys. But hey, you know what? We're on camera, so of course I'm going to get hit. Take care of this guy, and we're almost done with this episode. We're almost able to get our new weapon. We're not quite there yet, but we're close. We're close. Just hold on to your horses. All right, we're going to go over here and grab a life gem. Now, I'm sure there's a way to get over there. I have no idea what it is. I'm not going to spend a lot of time jumping because you take a lot of fall damage jumping around this area. And it's painful and unsatisfying. Now, this guy... This guy, same as the other guy, but he will fall back on you, so don't directly stand behind him without rolling out of the way. Now, when he does that, you're going to do a tremendously huge amount of damage to him immediately. And hopefully... Again, he won't be as slow as me. My... I, I'm not gonna say I'm lagging because that's absolutely not true, but like my uh, my brain is just too, or my maybe it's my hand-eye coordination is too slow today. Apparently, I can't dodge out of the way of a very simple attack. Meh. Anyhow, you're gonna come into this wonderful fiery place, and you're gonna see there's a horrible creature. I don't know. It's like a a fire lizard or a fire snake or a frog or something. Basically, you're going to want to wait till he spits his first fireball, and then you're going to go step forward, grab this loot. Then you're going to get out of the way. Then you're going to wait till his next fireball. And you're going to run up, and you're going to go, and you're going to open this door, and you're going to roll inside of it as soon as it's open, so you don't get hit with the next fireball volley. And inside this chest is our next weapon. So we're going to have a short sword as our offhand, and we're going to have this fire longsword as our main hand. So, let's go ahead and do that. It's going to be 10 strength needed and 9 dexterity. We have that, and it does look like our damage goes down, but it doesn't actually because we're actually getting 78 physical damage versus the 100, but we're also getting 78 fire damage. So that's going to be our primary weapon, and for now our short sword will be our secondary weapon. Alright, as soon as that first fireball hits, you're free to run out and head to the right, and we're pretty much done in this area. If you don't want to run the risk of leaving out of that area, then make sure you loot this cave beforehand. I think I forgot to do this. I did. There's a shield in here. But if you looted this cave, you killed all the other guys, and you looted the thing up over that way that we did earlier, and then you go in there and you get the fire longsword, I would recommend using one of your homeward bones that you should have six of by now. 
and using it to go back to the fireplace of doom. Here in Majula's Temple of Love and Exciting Awesomeness, or some such nonsense, I don't know. I don't know, I'm sorry guys, my voice is actually quite strained today as well. It's a bit unfortunate. I did work today, so when I work, I, I, I don't know, I talk differently, so it strains my voice a bit more. Anyway, we're going to rest at the bonfire, and then in the next episode, we are going to go about our business heading off to... Well, head down there and do some stuff. So, hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. And it'll all be in the very next episode. We will head down this hole, and we will see what's down there, and we will do some murder-death killing and some victory and all that stuff. But before we do that, before we end it all, let's go kill this guy just because he's there and it's extra soul. And I get to show off the fire long sword. It did pretty good. It's got much better reach than the short sword. It attacks just about as quickly or as quickly. And it's just, it's good. It's a really good weapon. It's going to be probably a mainstay of mine for quite a while. We'll see. Either way, folks, in the next episode, we dive down deep into the dark dungeon beneath our feet. And hopefully we come out with some success. I don't know that I'll make it to the first boss in the next episode, but it will be close. We may make it to the first boss. We'll see. If nothing else, I'll at least get you to the point where you'll have your own soapstone and you'll be able to summon your friends if you're playing or plan to play with another person. So... There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. There you have it. Until the very next episode, my name's Bumpy McSquiggums. Thank you so much for stopping by the Freak Show, and I will see you later.